We want to get perspective now from conservative lawyer and Washington Post contributing columnist George Conway. George, what do you make of this? I mean, does it make sense to you what McCarthy's doing? No, I mean, it makes sense as a purely PR act to, you know, plas classify, um, to, to placate, placate um, Tucker Carlton, Carlson and to placate the, the MAGA base. But it doesn't make any sense from any other standpoint. For example, the, the idea that the defendants need this, um, need this in order to, to defend themselves. Well, the government already, if the government already has this stuff and there is anything in there that's exculpatory, they're, in, they're required to produce it and um, under, under the Brady against Maryland. And the fact of the matter is, what is it that could possibly show that would help these defendants? I mean, for example, if you catch one defendant um, smearing feces on the walls of the Capitol, um, and he later then uses the bathroom in another video and, and washes his hands. That, that doesn't get him off what he did in the first place. And showing that, I don't know what else they could possibly glean from it, showing that Capitol Police officers at some points allowed people to come in. Um, well, they did, you know, they, they did that in part because they were, they were trying to prevent a bloodbath. And so it's, I just don't, I just don't understand what it, what it is that they're, they're trying to accomplish other than to just perpetuate the January 6th lie, that there was nothing, nothing extraordinary that happened on January 6th. From a, a legal perspective, how much trouble do you think Fox News is in with this Dominion lawsuit? Oh, I, I, it's incredible. Um, I litigated libel cases, one, one in particular in my practice 25 years ago, and litigated lots of other cases. You know, when you have a libel case and you're the plaintiff, um, plaintiff's lawyer, you don't expect to get anything remotely like this. I mean, it's sort of like a, these cases are like a kaleidoscope. What you have is that sometimes you, you turn it one way and the reporters look a little careless and they look like they're ignoring something and the other way, they can see how they might've believed the story to be true. And what's really remarkable is that this comes in the context of the most difficult standard, the most difficult standard um, that you could possibly apply in a, in a libel case, which is the New York Times against Sullivan standard, which governs um, the, the, the the libel claims on, on matters of public concern and against public figures. And that requires, it, it's a bit of a misnomer because people talk about it being the standard of actual malice. The Supreme Court uses that word, but malice right. really isn't required. And then they, you also hear the term reckless disregard, but recklessness isn't enough. It's not enough that a reporter kind of just blew past some facts. It's what you have to show, and there's a case from 1968 called St. Anna, St. Amant versus Thompson that says that what you have to show to show reckless disregard is that at a minimum, the publisher of the information or the broadcaster of the information actually entertained serious doubts as to the truth of what was being reported. Mm -hmm. And here it's just, you have that in droves at, at multiple levels. You have the fact checkers, you have the anchors, you have, see, you have Rupert Murdoch all agreeing that this was false. And you never see in a libel case, you just virtually never see in a libel case, the libel plaintiff moving for summary judgment, which is a judgment without a trial saying that there's really no issue to go to the jury. There's, it's, 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 it's all one-sided because the standard against libel plaintiffs is so high. And here they've made that motion and it's not a bad motion. Um, I, I think ultimately it'll, it'll be heard before a jury, but if the judge actually granted, um, on, certainly on falsity, because they're not, they're not disputing falsity. If the judge even granted on actual malice it, uh, and, and uh, you know, and, and the state of mind, the New York Times standard, it, that wouldn't be crazy. And that's mm. remarkable. Do you think it it affects? I mean, if if the ruling if it does go to trial and there's a you know a big fine for Fox, I mean, does that? impact, do you think, kind of right-wing media, how it behaves going to the 2024 election? Or even just the handling of the former president? Because, I mean, Fox is in this weird position now of how, if the former president goes on their air and repeats lies about Dominion voting machines and the last election, what did they do? Well, I, it's hard to say because the law isn't any, going to be any different after a judgment is entered against Fox than it was before. Right. You're not supposed to lie. You can't tell lies. You're going to be held liable for lies. And yet Fox has been taking this, this crazy view. And you saw it in the excerpts of Rupert Murdoch's deposition. You see it in some of the statements that their PR flax have been releasing, which is like, oh, well, Fox didn't endorse the big lie. Um, 
our, maybe some of our anchors did. It doesn't right. work that way. You know that, Anderson. If you say something and you report something and you describe it as, as fact or even as, a, as, a, as, as something short of established fact, I mean, you know, CNN is on the hook if you libel somebody. And, and your state of mind matters. And it's just, it's like, yeah. it, it's crazy what, what, they're, what they're taking the position. They're taking a position like, eh, these people, yeah, we pay them. We pay them millions of dollars. They, 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 they sit on our, they, they're on our air. They work for us, but they don't speak for us. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, George Conway, appreciate it. Thank you.